Um, well, first of all, the new Armored Saint album is out next month. And um, it always feels, to me, it always feels very special when an Armored Saint album comes out because there's always a gap in between albums. This time it's uh, five years since Win Hands yeah. Down. So, yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're, on this, uh, we're on this kind of, we've been on this schedule for a while. I think before that it was five years between yeah. La Raza as well. Yeah, um, but um, I think it works. Though. I think it gives you, gives you plenty of time to really put together the album you want to make, and every, especially the last three albums, they've not disappointed in the slightest. So it seems to be a good formula. Yeah, yeah. you know, we don't. To be honest with you, it's not something we really plan out. It just has sort of. It's really just been happening that way. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's ironic that it's been five years for the last three records, but it's certainly not in the plan to do that. It's not intentional, really. But what is intentional is um, us taking the time. Uh, and what I mean by that is I mean literally taking the time by waiting for us to be fully kind of um, inspired or motivated to write music. We're not a band that... Um, we never do any writing while we're touring. Uh, we always wait until a cycle ends and then we go back and, uh, you know, wait for the muse to show up and then we just start writing. Um, and this happened to be five years. You know, we, we yeah. did a lot of touring for Win Hands Down and uh, we did almost more, more touring on that record than we've done, I think, for almost any of our entire career cycles. Um, it's just been, it was ironic, but we had a long stretch of dates that we did. Uh, those, granted, some of them were short runs, but it was a lot of them. Um, and I think it was when we got back from doing the Queensryche tour in the U.S. here that we kind of said, it took a couple, we took a month off or so. And then I was just kind of doodling. It must have been, an, I'm going to say December of 2017 and a couple of riffs came up to fruition and I turned them into songs and then by January I had written a couple of songs two songs I would say and that's when the ball really started rolling and and we wrote for we finished writing in I'm gonna say October of 2019 so you know almost two years of of you know of writing it's very slow process <laughs> yeah. but that's just how it goes with us um we have families and kids and you know hockey practice and uh, <laughs> school and so all those things take precedent and so we work around our schedules and and then you know it but it's a cool thing because uh, we don't have a schedule we don't have the label on our backs you know like okay we need a record by january you know 19 you know make make it happen you know it's 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 a completely wide open door and they say whenever whenever you're ready you know yeah. so it's a cool way for us to work uh we have the luxury of uh taking our time good good but um, the label probably feel the same way that i do and a lot of other fans do as well which is again it's worth the wait it's it's that's cool. I mean, I hope it's worth the wait. <laughs> well, the, the uh, that's good, good to hear. Have, the two singles haven't disappointed at all. Standing on the shoulders of giants. Yeah. The attention span. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. That's yeah. People, saying, you know. Yeah. Thank you. Um, people seem to be responding really well to it. And, um, you know, I mean, you know, people are asking about a lot about the process and, why it takes so long or, you know, how do we work? And, and, you know, the only thing I, the the main things I try to get across is that we, we're super lucky to have the, this time that I'm talking about, you know, we take our time to do it and we're, we're lucky to have this time. The label was very generous uh, in allowing us to be off schedule as it were and work on our own pace. Uh, And I don't, I don't know of any other label or band that has that situation. Uh, And I think it's because we're, you know, we're a legacy band. We're not one of their, you know, we're not as, there's not as much as stake as there is like, say, in a Mon or a 
you know, a, a bigger band. You know, we're we're not as big as those bands as Mono Marth. You know, we we have we we're a much smaller uh, select <laughs> uh, audience base, and so it's I don't know. Maybe there's just less at stake. You know, but mm-hmm. I think that that they that they just you know they just allow us to work in this way and we're super grateful that that they do and by the same token our fans uh are patient and they they also uh let us work in this way and they i think that allowing having this freedom and and i talk about this in, in other ways and i've mentioned it in the bio that we have this this freedom and this it creates this kind of comfort zone for us and we we can work in this way and it really helps us to be like really focused on what we're trying to do and and uh it allows us to create music that's just super genuine and and real and honest and for us that's the ultimate goal is just to be able to express ourselves how we want to at any at that given time and this is the time right now and this record is a snapshot of of where we are now and so um you know i i consider it uh uh, a privilege to have this this um this freedom in this in this time to work in this way Uh, we don't take it for granted at all i think as well given some of the um the longer gaps in between armored saint albums bands are just happy that you're still going and still writing new material and yeah um, you know, and and I've, I've said it about five times already, but again, they know it's worth the wait. I mean, you compare, like, in my honest opinion, Symbol of Salvation is one of the best heavy metal albums ever written by anyone, far none. And then wow. you fast forward that 20 years later and you release a song like um, Left Hook from Right Field, which is my favorite Armored Saint song. So it just shows that, you know, it, Armored Saint is timeless in its way. That's awesome. I mean, I, I, I uh, you know, I, that's, I love hearing that. Um, you know, it's, it's not something, uh, uh, I mean, like I said, the only design on our end is that we're, we're just trying to make honest music and, and make music that's genuine and honest. And, uh, and I think that fans, for the most part, uh, especially our fans, they see that they can see that we're not, you know, we never jumped on the, on the uh, you know the new metal or the rap metal wave. You know we never really followed trends per se, um, and we've we'll always just try to do our own thing. You know, so um, we're uh, again we're lucky that um, oof, I mean we're lucky that <laughs> forty you know we're like forty something years into this career and and we still have fans that want to hear music from us and. It's just completely mind-boggling, you know. When, when we were 19 years old, you asked me this question, like, what do you, where do you think you'll be when you're in your 57 years old? I'd say I'd be six feet in the ground. I mean, I'm not going to live past <laughs> till I'm past 30, you know. So the fact that we're here 40 years later yeah. and pe- people still give a shit about our band, it's it's completely humbling. It's, I mean, it's amazing. And uh, we, we consider ourselves super lucky. Well, let's uh, talk a little bit about the the singles that I mentioned before. We've done um, two music videos for the album so far. Um, Standing on the shoulders of giants only dropped a couple of days ago, and that's yeah. a really sweet video. And it's got you know obviously the performance uh, footage of the band, but aerial footage of I think Romania, judging by the um, the names of the people that worked on the <laughs> drone footage. Yeah. Um, and um, they both seem very visual, but without being too, um, what's the word, too much of a, a theatrics, if you like. Yeah. Do you feel that yeah. represents the, um, the band perfectly, to focus more on the music? and? Uh, yeah, I think so. You know, we, we uh, you know, we're all about the, you know, we're all about the music for sure. I mean, that's for sure the one thing, you know, we're not, not so, uh, you know, it's particularly the way that John Bush writes his lyrics. Um, you know, they can be about something, but very rarely 
does uh, John take a stance or a, or a, it's he's never sort of um, preaching. He's mm-hmm. never he's very rarely on a soapbox telling you what what you should think or how you should understand these words. He more more often than not will promote. He presents them as uh, as just as lyrics, and then you can. A lot of the times, you just there's there's the uh, the, the um, openness for interpretation is very wide, and you can two different you know ten different people could get ten different things from the song, and he likes to do that um, because he wants people to make up their own minds, and he wants them yeah. to be engaged in the lyrics and. And you know what does it mean to you? How do you understand this? You know, so sometimes I'm trying to get him to be more specific. You know, I said, well, <laughs> you know, can't you just you know make it more like a Bob Dylan song, like you know? <laughs> but he he doesn't want to do that. He wants it to be. He wants the listener to be engaged to the point of making up their own decisions, mm-hmm. and and I think that's cool. And so, you know, and so. We're this we're the the same way you know visually too. We don't we don't really try to do too much storytelling um, with especially music videos. Uh, but although you know there's room for you know like left hook from left right hook from left field for instance is a is another example of a song that um, you could be taking a lot of different ways uh, lyrically and when you read them. Um, the watching the video. Uh, also, but it tells a little more of the story, and you can kind of take away different things from it as well. But um, so you know, we try to leave uh, even the visual stuff uh, open for some interpretation. Um, yeah, so we're we're getting ready to work on a third video. I'm not telling you what it is yet, but um, oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, this one will also have some. It'll have some narrative narrative story in it but it's you know we're certainly not making little movies by any means no. we're not we're not a concept band and we never really tried to be that um but you know important thing for us is to have a performance because you know we're a performing band we're a good live band and that part of that energy needs to come across even in a music video um, but you know, there's, there's also some space to try to have some storytelling. So we're going to try to combine a little bit of that in there for the next one as well. Cool. Look forward to that. Yeah. Um, if I may, I'd like to talk to you about something else that you've got coming up soon, which is the new Fate Warning album. Sure. Um, again, it's not been quite as long a gap, four years this time in between, uh, Fate Warning albums. Uh, yeah. How are you comparing uh, Long Day, Good Night to the previous release? Well, um, <clears throat> for me, you know, I'm my role is completely different in this band. I don't do any of the songwriting or anything. Okay. But um, uh, from my vantage point, um, it feels like a very different record to me, um, although it's not really a very <laughs> different record per se. But it does have a, a very different vibe to it. Um, the music is um, a lot of the songs. I don't. I can't even really say a lot of the songs, but I'd say some of the songs are, are a little bit on the shorter side. Okay. Um, so they're a little bit more to the point. I want to say um, some of them have some elements of simplicity to them. I could actually say the same thing about the new Armored Saint record, in my opinion, um, the, the very same things I would <laughs> describe. Um, so the two records are similar in this way. Um, but um, but there's also some, you know, there's a few songs on there that are just crazy proggy, which is, yeah. you know, what you should, I think, a Fate's Warning fan should expect. So uh, there's certainly some of that in there as well. Um, and the production... Uh, the record was mixed by Joe Barisi, so th- he he lent a whole different uh, take to it. So it's got a different uh, vibe than um, than Darkness and okay. um, and uh, uh, the following one. Damn, I just you just mentioned it, but <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, theories. Sorry. Um, so uh, I think sonically it has a different vibe as well. Um, so they're very different, but Jim and Jim and Ray wrote some great songs. Um, 
great melodies and great parts and of course you know lots of really cool uh instrumentations and of course jim is a master of that so um it's it's up to par for sure in that sense um but it's a little it's a little bit different i think it has its own thing i think that's cool you know it's, it's nice to still be surprised i mean both fates warning and um armored saints died back in the 80s and that they can both still give so many surprises whilst at the same time delivering on what people expect if you know what i mean it's yeah. like um napalm death today released a new album and it's very noise rock orientated but it's still napalm death and it's still the same way with armored saint face warning i think i mean you mentioned a lot of the songs on the new face warning album being kind of more to the point that's definitely the vibe i got from scars and I really like that song. It's really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. That's and again, a good example. Yeah. And there's plenty of um, songs from Face Warning, like even before you joined, that were reminiscent of Scars in their own way. You know, they were very, not so much yeah. to the yeah. point, I guess, but they were more catchy than some of the proggier elements. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. The, the stuff on Parallels, for instance. Uh, yeah. Good example of that, right? Um, obviously, with two albums from two established bands, it's going to drum up a lot of um, interest in that. However, obviously, because of the pandemic, you can't really tour or anything like that at the moment. How much has the pandemic thrown uh, a spanner in the works for both bands? Well, you know, like everybody else, uh, we, you know, we can't go anywhere. We can't tour. We can't play locally. You know, at least in Los Angeles, uh, I think most of the states anyway, there's a, there's a few states here in, L in, Cal in the United States that are allowing uh, some kind of gatherings, but not in the West Coast. Uh, California, you know, can't have anybody in a venue. And so everything stopped. I mean, it's everywhere for everybody. Uh, technicians, uh, sound and lights and road crew i mean everybody in the industry is at a standstill mm. and it's affected everyone in that in the same way so uh we are no we're not in the an exception there um the only thing we have to do or can do is we're doing a virtual live stream um at the whiskey a go go here in la um but we're playing in an empty room with just with five or six cameras and the sound crew and lights and everything. And we're going to be performing and streaming it uh, for our, our fans. Um, and uh, we're doing this starting on October 10th okay. and it runs, it runs for a month from October 10th to uh, November 8th. And, you know, we have a record coming out October 23rd. So we wanted to have a record release party and, we want to connect with fans, and this is the only way we can do this. Um, it's going to be alien. Don't get me wrong, because we're playing in front of nobody. But um, you know, it's either this or do nothing. So yeah. we want to we want to connect with people. We want to we want people to hear our music, and we want to we want some kind of connection. So um, we're doing this live stream. Uh, we're playing a full set. We're playing four brand new songs from the record. Um, we're going to be doing like a Q&A at the end of it. So people are going to submit questions for us and we're going to answer them. Um, so anyone interested in this, uh, there's a website to go to. It's called uh, Armored Saint, that's one word, dot veeps, that's V-E-E-P-S dot com. Armored Saint dot veeps dot com. And it's just 10, 10, yeah, it's 10 US dollars. Uh, to get in you, anybody can buy it anywhere in the world uh, and uh, like I said it's going to be streaming for a full month so if you can't make it on the 10th you can watch it on the 12th or the 15th or November 1st or whatever you want <laughs> um, and uh, we also have some merch and signed CDs if people are interested in getting bundles but um, but you know if you just want to hang out sit on your couch stream you know stream it on your big screen tv bowl of popcorn can of beer whatever you want <laughs> um you know we were inviting people to come rock out with us so uh it's 
you know, this is our only way around this, you know, is to do this right now. Yeah. And uh, we can't even make any plans, you know, for, you know, we can't make any touring plans because it's it's still unknown what's going to be happening in January or, or February or March of next year. And I know that some places are making, some bands are making plans, but, you know, as far as I know, our, our U.S. visas are no good. So we, we can't even go into the into Europe uh, yet. So we're at a standstill and we're just going to, we're just going to have fun with this uh, stream gig and um, make some more videos and do what we can to stay, you know, engaged. Yeah. That sounds good. And it's, uh, unfortunately, um, you know, like you say, you are a live band first and foremost. And yeah. Like I've, unfortunately, I've never got to experience Armored Saint or Face Warning live. So I'd like to. They're both like top of the bucket list for me. Ah. <laughs> Where do you live? Um, I live in England. I live in Huddersfield. Uh, is that up north? Where is yep. that? That's just outside of Leeds. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, and anyone from Huddersfield listening to that is going to kill me for saying that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and we've you know we've we've toured the UK once, I think. Yeah, and probably the closest we came to you was maybe Manchester. Yeah, that's about thirty miles away. That's not really a yeah. Option. He's only moved up there at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Yeah, I've lived down south. I've lived in Spain. I've lived in yeah like anywhere that it's hard to book Armored Saint, basically. <laughs> Which is yeah yeah. There's a lot of places we still have yet to play, so we yeah. we're still we have our bucket list, and we still got a lot of a lot of work to do. <laughs> um, just uh, before I let you go, I'd I'd like to ask you um, about joining Merciful Fate this year. I believe you joined Merciful Fate, unless I've got what? bad information. Uh, well, no, they've they've asked me to um, to do uh, some touring with them, and and it came about last year. Um, I was on tour with Fate's Warning, as it as it turns out, um, and we were going through Dallas, Texas, and King Diamond lives there, and he's him and I have been friends for quite some years, and um, um, Brian Slagle was also in town. And so Brian and King came to the show and, you know, came backstage after we played and King pulled me aside and he asked me, uh, he told me that Timmy was going through chemotherapy at the time and that he, he, he was, it was a possibility that he would be um, too weak to travel and to do any dates. And they had uh, festival shows this summer in 2020. Yeah. And he asked me if Timmy wasn't, be, wasn't able to do it, if I would, kind of be on call and um and i said uh sure i mean i it was honored that he considered me to do that and at the time i was free i was i didn't have any i was didn't have any plans for the summer of 2020 no uh and i said uh, sure i'll do it and then unfortunately uh several months later go by and uh and my whole thinking in my mind was that uh that ah you know Timmy's going to pull through and he'll he'll be strong enough you know and I, I I told him I'd do it but I wasn't didn't really think it was going to come to fruition or happen and unfortunately a couple of months later he he went really south and he just didn't pull out of it and unfortunately he passed away and it was obviously just a completely devastating situation yeah. it was terrible and I'm everybody it's it's just terrible you know it was a sad situation and then Timmy was a great bass player and a super nice guy everybody that you i'm sure everything you've read about him is, and it's true he was just a really cool dude mm. and it was just a really tragic sad thing you know um so you know a month or so went by and then hank hank sherman emailed me back and he said you know albeit everything sucks right now but our, we're still trying to keep our dates and are you still in and i said well yeah i told you i would be so <laughs> um so that's when uh you know that's when i full-on jumped in and i was learning i had the set like i was about halfway through the set when COVID hit you know and then, yeah uh oh, everything just got bumped and supposedly everything's moved to next year all this just i would say 80 percent of the same dates have just been rebooked for next summer yeah 
And as far as I know, it's a go. Um, but again, uh, <laughs> this world is changing daily. So we'll see if it actually happens. Yeah. But uh, the plans are that it is happening. So yeah. we will see. I certainly hope so, because I want to get to Bloodstock and see you. Yeah. I mean, it would be it would be cool to uh, to to do it. You know, uh, like for me, um, it's a crazy, weird circle because when I was first coming up in Armored Saint, and uh, when we were first playing, this was in 1980, 1982, 1983. Um, you know, I I had a small gathering of pen pals, um, and uh, I would. I was a tape trader for a little while there, and I was sending tapes back and forth, cassette tapes of, uh, you know, just local bands, uh, Armored Saint music, uh, things like that, and I would get I would get music back. So I, I had, in particular, I had some guys over in Europe that were uh, became pen pals of mine. One of them was in Holland, and one was in Belgium, and um, and you know, I got like you know, I got Jaguar first you know ep you know from the uk and um all kinds of stuff and one of the tapes i got was uh the first merciful fate uh ep nuns have no fun and um i played the crap out of that cassette you know i loved that first ep you know uh yeah. it was a big, it was a big part of what i was listening to in 82 and 83 yeah. and so uh fast forward to now and i'm learning these songs and it's like wow this is just crazy like never in my mind that ever, ever imagined that i'd be playing in this band you know yeah. so it's a pretty cool circle uh you know if it happens which i hope it does at some point in the future i'll i'll be pinching myself on stage like holy crap i'm actually playing in merciful fate right now this is pretty fucking wild yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be funny as well because there'll be like armored saint and face warnings fans in the crowd going that's Joey Vera playing with Mercy yeah. Fate. They'll be marking out just as hard. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild. Pretty wild situation. Yeah, man. Joey, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me today, mate. I really do appreciate it. No worries. In the morning. Yeah, no worries. Thank you, Oliver. Thanks for uh, doing this and spreading the word and and much appreciated. Thank you. Anytime, mate. Look after yourself. You too, man. Be safe. Bye. Take care. Cheers.